Yo, what's up everybody? It's time for a new walkthrough. Let's take a look at the song Head Games. That's from the latest Metalheads offering that I have. So here we go. So uh, I'm going to run you through the project and we're going to take a look at this and that. I probably won't go super deep and nerdy into mixing. There's nothing really like super particular in terms of mixing, but the uh, song structure and the vibe and stuff like that is definitely what I want to talk about. So I um, I expect you to have heard the song, or if not, I mean, I guess it still works. But if you've heard the song, you probably know what's to come. So let's talk about the song a little bit. Let me just play this for a second. So, I had this, the first section, I had that for a long time. I re remember doing that in that, in like one sitting, some summer day. I wanted to, I was planning to do some sort of footworky stuff. And I had that loop for a long time. Basically the whole intro part, which is sort of different from the uh, latter part of the song. So that I had for a long time and I never knew where to go. When I create a song, I usually want to know roughly where I want to go before I try to take it further. And this is to avoid the pitfall of sort of getting really bored of the song, which can, which is actually an actual threat to a good song. Earlier, I have talked about how I usually make songs, and it often happen, happens in the session view in Ableton Live where I plan the busiest part of the song and I put a lot of time on that. I do the like the busiest part, the main theme. I add like additional supporting instruments and ideas and sounds. So I know that this will be the song and I have everything that it needs in terms of instruments and extra shit. And then I just kind of spread the butter. It's like a slamming a lump of butter on the bread and then you just spread it and my analogy has been that i won't try and bake the cake before i have all the ingredients laid out on the table but this song worked differently because like i said i created the first part which was it was supposed to be a, like a sort of juke footworky thing like a kind of So the whole song was supposed to be like that, I thought, and I had that loop for a while. I didn't want to take it further before I got like an idea. Sometimes I literally try and think of an idea before I make it into a song. Kind of to repeat myself, um, I don't want to wear out the, this, the project or the song or the idea for myself because you may have a good idea, but you hear too much of it like too often and then you just get bored and you're like, I don't know, I just, I'm just going to delete it. So this, like the first part I had for a long time, and I just want to, I wanted to keep it for when I had the idea, like where to go from that. But let's talk about this um, intro part a little bit. One funny thing, or I don't know if it's funny or not. This, um, unlike many songs of mine, this song doesn't have an intro hi-hat. And a lot of times I say like it's nice to have an like intro hi hat for DJs because if you play it in a club or in a, in a very loud setting, you're gonna need that hi hat so you can just beat make, like beat match it, cue it, and hear that. And I did have it there, but uh, I forgot if it was Goldie or the label head and TC one who said maybe you could drop the hi hat in the intro. And I was like, said why? I'm gonna need it so I can mix it nicely. Well, obviously you can mix it nicely without it, but I was, I guess I was stubborn. I took the hi hat out and I sent it to Metalheads, and they were like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's the reason why the song doesn't have a, like this little that I always like to do. It it makes mixing so much easier. But I guess with today's tools, like I just got the new Pioneer that shows you the P BPM, you kind of don't even need it. You just, I mean, the intro hi hat. You just slam the song in and mix. So. The 
beat is definitely different from what I usually do. I found this beat in, um, let me show you, it's a, it's a part of an old MPC 4000 sample pack. And I also put that through my SB1200. This is the original beat. That's literally part of a, like a set of samples that's shipped with MPC 4000 many years ago. I didn't have that with my MPC 4000. I did have an MPC 4000, but I got samples from some Akai group. Thing is, I love to browsing. I love to browse old old samples. Uh, getting my hands on whatever kind of weird stuff. That's the stuff that I want to use. I also, like I said, I put it through my SB twelve hundred, so the sound changed a little bit. Uh, it's a little dirtier. So once more, this is the original SB. It's a bit of aliasing. It's kind of shitty. But some EQ goes a long way in terms of uh, spicing things up. So it's just getting a little bit of brightness. You can hear that sort of greedy sound. Like it felt a little too clean to me. I don't like super clean sound or I guess I kind of do. But like getting a bit of sort of lo-fi shitty shittiness in there is what I want to get. In terms of style and the overall vibe, I think I was largely uh, inspired by Tech 9, especially when it comes to the first sort of drop here. But uh, as for the intro, by the way, let me flick off the delay here because doing a video and doing a lot of start to stop and hearing the long delay tail can get a little annoying. So the delay bus is muted. So. It'll sound uh, just a little bit different than the release version. So what's happening in, in, in the intro, there's a lot of supporting sounds. The main chord was an Ableton Live thing. I hope my laptop, laptop doesn't crash. So, so it's a wavetable preset. I forgot if I created this myself or not, but it doesn't matter. I'm fine using presets, I don't give a fuck. So uh, it's a wavetable one. There's something very old jungle sounding about it. Maybe I'm thinking back to some Desert Storm compilations that something had a sound like that. So everything started from this sound, literally. What I do a lot is um, I create clips like this. Like sometimes I do a lot of chords that I keep. And I save them in user library and clips. This is literally one of the best features about Ableton Live. And I think Bidwig does it as well. So you can save a clip here and you can listen to it later on. And you even hear the uh, effects with it. So I don't even remember what these are, but let me just play this. So I save these. And whenever I want to make a mu make music or start a new song, I usually come to this clips folder and listen to what I've got. And I save these ideas and uh, every now and then I just decide that, okay, I'm going to do something around this. Everything that I save in this clips folder is usually something that I find pretty inspirational, a chord, or something. It's usually, I don't do breaks here. I do some bass sounds, but usually what I save here is the chords and melodies that get me stoked. So I have a lot of stuff that I can just start with. So this sweet old jungle thing was uh, something that I saved and I wanted to do something around it. And everything just kind of builds around this. And I've had a production style for a while where I just kind of add things that kind of support the main melody. That's definitely a production style that where you can use to give give your song some length. Like you, you keep adding some small sounds. For example, here I'm using this arcade plugin that's playing uh, some sounds. Let's see what. So it's this track here. Whoops. 
me let me on solo let's listen up for a while 